Why, hello everyone! Welcome, 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 welcome to the first Big Blue Amusement Productions podcast. I am Caleb, the host of Big Blue Amusement Productions, and this is my first ever podcast. So, I want to welcome you guys here to my first podcast. In these podcasts, we are going to talk about... Um, Especially this offseason, some amusement park stuff that's going on. We'll also talk about sports stuff, specifically football and basketball, specifically Kentucky Wildcats stuff. And maybe when I go on trips, I'll do trip vlogs on this channel. I'll also discuss upcoming trips when I decide on trips when we get when I get to go on them. So anyway, let's get into this podcast, shall we? Wow, what what a weekend it was for college football. It was a crazy weekend. Michigan State getting knocked off by Purdue. Um, Alabama struggling a bit with LSU. Cincinnati struggling with Tulsa. Ohio State struggling a little bit with Nebraska. Michigan kind of a little iffy with Indiana. But the big game I'm going to talk about today is what happened to Kentucky? Man. Started off 6-0 and and just suffered their third loss of the season at the hands of, a, of an opponent we are almost used to losing to a lot recently now. Tennessee, one of our biggest rivals. So we're going to go ahead and go into this podcast and we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk a little bit about the game. We're going to go through highlights and go through. And I also want to talk about, is it time to move on from Mark Stoops? So... Go ahead and stick around. We'll get right into it. So Saturday's game against Tennessee was a game we all thought Kentucky would win to turn it around after a two-game skid to end the season uh, 10-2 going into our bowl game. But the exact opposite happened, and Kentucky gets embarrassed at home by the Volunteers. This isn't the first time Tennessee has done this to us. As you know, Tennessee won like 20-some games against us in a row, uh, from 1984 to 2011. And then and then in our last really good season in 2018, coming off, off of that loss to Georgia, we went into Knoxville and laid a big fat egg, getting beat 24-7. Then the following year, when what could, should have been a revenge game, uh, we dropped that one in 2019 at home. And last year was the first time we've ever played a complete game against Tennessee, winning 34-7. to And then we come out just after laying a big fat egg at Mississippi State, getting whipped. We come out and lay a big fat egg again. Okay, so we're, what we're going to do is... I am going to go over some stats for you for this game. And some things may surprise you here. For This is for matchup here. First downs. Tennessee 17 first downs this whole game. Kentucky 35 first downs. Third down efficiency. Tennessee 3 and 8. Kentucky 12 and 17. Fourth down efficiency. Tennessee 0 and 1. Kentucky 1 and 4. Total yards, Tennessee, 461. Kentucky, 612. Passing, Tennessee, 316 yards. Kentucky, 387 yards. Completes, 15 to 20 on Tennessee. And then Kentucky, 32 to 50. Yards per pass, 15.8 for Tennessee. 7.7 for Kentucky. Interceptions thrown, Tennessee zero interceptions thrown, Kentucky one. Before we before we go any further here, I want to clear. You do you see anything that what you may think when reading that you think Kentucky should have won the game, don't you? But no, 
There is a reason we lost this game. One word, defense. Our offense played our asses off. That Our offense was really, I thought, was great. I thought our offense played great. Defense is what just absolutely killed us this game. If we did not have an offense, this would have been a blowout. Offense is what cop kept us in this game, and this is why I'm glad Eddie Grin is gone. Liam Cohen is turning this offense around, but now the defense is the one that's in trouble, and we seem to always have a weakness instead of having a complete game. Like, you want an example? Tennessee, um, here, let's look, possession. Tennessee only had possession for 13 minutes and 52 seconds this game, while Kentucky had possession 46 minutes and 8 seconds. So we had the ball a lot more than they did, but because of our trash defense this game, like, in fact, they were, like, within one play, they were always within midfield or better because of our defense. And this falls right on defensive coordinator Brad White. Brad White should have done a lot better with his defensive performance and his defensive plays. He just let our guys get absolutely shredded in a sh cheese shredder and, and gave up all this many points. Like Tennessee scored on the first play of the game pretty much. We couldn't stop them. And, you know, they only had, like, 145 rushing yards. And they were 15 on 20 on completed pass and 15.8 yards per pass. And that tells you one thing. The rushing defense isn't the biggest problem. What, yet we gave some bad rushing yards. Our secondary is atrocious. I mean atrocious. Not just this game. The Mississippi State game, it was atrocious, but our offense was really bad that game, which is why that was blown out. And the Georgia game, our defense wasn't great either. But we were able to stay in that game for a bit. And, and you know what's crazy? Each team only had one turnover. One. It was our interception, and then when Tennessee fumbled the ball... Um, earlier in the game, which, so, both teams were good at handling the ball. Both teams were good at running the ball. But, Kentucky, if you, like, here's the thing. The defense in this game was an absolute joke. And, I will say, Tennessee's defense wasn't that great either. How They held, their defense stepped up at the right time when we got down the field, which, let, let me talk, let's talk about that last drive. Yes, there was a face mask there. But, Kentucky fans, why are we complaining about that missed call? Will Levis threw an absolute dime after that call, and we got the first down with a chance to take the lead, with like with like a minute or so to go. And you know what did we do? We went four and out. Like, yes, I would probably be upset with the officiating if we had not gotten the first down after that. But you know, what's crazy is we got that first down. We, or we got that first down after that. After that missed call. And we had a chance to take the lead. But we didn't. And this gives me flashbacks to the 2019 Tennessee game as well. We had that final drive. We could have taken the lead. But you know, Lim Bowden, he got stuffed on 4th and 1 that game. I know. This was ridiculous. So now, here's what we're going to do now. Let's go ahead and change the topic for, for a little bit. Is it time to move on from Mark Stoops? 
Mark Stoops has been with the program since 2013, when after Joker Phillips got fired. And you want something? This is way better than the Joker Phillips years. Joker Phillips years, we were getting trounced by, like, Tennessee. We were getting trounced by South Carolina. Trounced by Florida. All that. And we were never making bowl games. So this is better. However, there is a side to it on why I can see it may be time to move on. Mark Stoops is a good coach, but he's not gotten us over the hump yet. We had some good seasons. We're on track to have another pretty good season. But you know, with all the talent we got this year, all the talent, I think I think our fans were expecting 10 and 2. But it looks like at best we're going to go 9 and we're we're going to go like we're going to go or 11 and 2 was was our expectation. But it looks like at best we're going to go 10 and 3. That's not a bad season at all. But I think we could have like some of these games especially this game was very winnable. And it seems like the co coach Stoops I've said this in videos in the past. Coach Stoops his play calling is questionable at times. He, like, played this entire game not to lose. He also played the entire the entire Chattanooga game, even though we won that game, not to lose. He's played, like, also those collapses we've had against, like, Florida in the past was him playing not to lose. So, do I think Stoops should be fired? No. Do I think it's time to move on from Mark Stoops? No. I think, but I can see both sides of it, and I think that Mark Stoops needs to win out because if he loses to Vandy, if he loses to New Mexico State, both are terrible teams, he is going to be facing a lot more heat if he loses to those two teams. And Louisville? Um, like I said in my um, video um, yesterday, Louisville is not going to be a pushover. We're playing them at Louisville. And Louisville's on a two-game losing streak against us. They're going to be fired up. So if we don't come ready to play, we'll get beat by Louisville. So, Big Blue Nation, let's... It's okay to be disappointed. So, Big Blue Nation, let's buckle up, get through these last four games, the Vandy, New Mexico State, Louisville, and then whatever bowl game we end up in. Let's get through these last four games, and then basketball season starts on Tuesday with against Duke, hopefully revenge from a few years ago. Let's buckle up, let's get ready, because it's going to be, we'll see how the rest of the season plays out. Yo, cats! thank you for watching this podcast. This is my first podcast, and I plan to do many more of these podcasts throughout the, throughout the offseason, as well as when theme parks do make news and do make some announcements. I plan to do some podcasts here coming up soon. So thank you guys all for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you guys next time.